to another episode of Thursday Night Live presented by St. Thomas Crew. We got a great show planned for you guys tonight. Tonight, we got Fadi Shamoon and we got Pat Jabiro. Their topic that they're gonna bring up to us tonight is humility. They're gonna talk about humility, how it applies to us Chaldean Catholics. It's gonna be another great show. We're gonna have our typical, very, very funny commercials full of our crew leaders. So glad you guys are back on the show. Weather's getting nicer and nicer. We're getting closer and closer to going back to the church. So thank you very much for joining us again today. And I'm moving, I'm walking, my cameraman, my sister is doing a very good job right now getting all the amazing shots. So we're gonna have a great show for you guys tonight. Glad to have you along. And we're, can we stop moving? Are we good? Right here? It's right in here? Right First, here. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. We're gonna make Lebanese garlic dipping. We're gonna put this here, we're gonna make chop it. Very chopped, very fine. And then, after we get it all, mince it. Now the time for the garlic dipping, we're gonna take the lemon. We need lemon, we're gonna squeeze it in the garlic dipping, okay? Mom! 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 Can you bring me a lemon, please? Now we take the lemon, we're gonna make a squeeze. <laughs> Her pesty garlic. Hello. And that, my friends, is how you make the garlic dipping. Very good, very nice. Now continue making a watch, okay? I said, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Cause then I start to taste them. I say. I just bought my new video kit from Hillbilly Dude and how to chop down a tree. Uh, a little bit of something went wrong, but we gonna learn how to cut with a taste off. <laughs> Crew Night Live presented by St. Thomas Crew Brotherhood. We got the chai. It's perfect color today. I think it's just because Fadi and Pat are on the show tonight. They made the chai come out perfect. Glad you guys. Glad to have you guys back on the show. Not back on the show. It's your first time. Anyway, you guys are highly requested. Not as highly requested as Dom Edda. Just want to confirm that with every guest we have on this show, even Father Rodney, I, I, I confirmed that with him. But anyway, Fadi, Pat. Glad to have you guys on the show tonight. We're going to have a great talk. You guys are going to bring us a topic of humility. Humility is very important. A lot of people, you know, get confused on what exactly humility is. But Fadi and Pat are here to clear this up for us. They're going to talk about humility and how it applies to us Chaldean Catholics specifically. So I will start with Fadi. Fadi, talk to me a little bit about humility. Talk to me about the origins and, you know, how it applies to us Catholics. Thank you, Omar. Okay. Uh, in order to talk about humility, I think we have to define what it really is. A lot of people get confused. Um, the definition of humility is a modest or low view of your own importance, or in other words, humbleness, right? And that's very important in the, in the Catholic faith, right? To be humble, to appreciate your blessings, and, and appreciate God's blessings towards your daily life. Um, St. Augustine, he once said, no one reaches the kingdom of heaven except by humility. I'll repeat again. No one reaches the kingdom of heaven except by humility. Now, it's kind of easy to just read that quote and brush it off, but he said some powerful words. No one reaches the kingdom of heaven except by humility. That hit me very hard when I read this because it shows that how important humility is in our daily lives and how we have to live to be humble and drop our pride and ego, right? We're not perfect the only only thing that's perfect is god god gives us our blessings god gives us our love without god we are nothing 
So if we drop the pride and ego, we become, we, we live with humility, we become humble. Pat, I think, I know so, you, said you had something to say about this quote as well, right? Yeah, hold on, so, Fadi, Fadi, hold on, hold on. Pat, don't even talk right now. Don't even talk right now. Fadi, what's going on? What's going on, man? Are you the host? You oh, talk, oh, oh. and then you okay. stop talking. And then that's when the host, I, Omar Kalbeck, comes in and says, Pat, you know, what do you think about what Fadi just said? So that's how the rest of the show is going to go, Fadi. Sure, it's okay. Sure. I love you. You know, I'm going to wow. be humble. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to show a little bit of humility. I know you made a mistake. You know, it's okay. Anyway, Pat, what did so you think about what Fadi just said? Did you have anything to add on to Fadi what said, Pat? That's how it's done, Fadi. Omar, I love you. First and foremost, love I love Azizi. you. I love you too, Azizi. Fadi, bro, uh, everything you said was spot on. Uh, I, I really agree with everything you said, especially when the part when you go, uh, no one makes it to heaven uh, without humility. So I read, I read a quote. I actually watched a video by Bishop Barron, who Father Rodney actually rec uh, recommended it to me. So all props to him. You know, that wasn't me. Uh, in this video, he was talking about uh, Thomas Aquinas, and he said, humility is truth. And it's as simple as that. Humility is truth. It's, it's honesty. Uh, with humility, you know, it's we we always get caught up in pride. So pride is, is one is the major thing that separates us from God and separates us from the entire world, right? So, and that's something that like I also struggle with too, and I know a lot of our a lot of us struggle with it. Uh, but going with like humility and pride, and it's like it, it's so important not to get caught up with it because everyone wants to show up, everyone wants to show out right with their biggest cars or their fastest cars their biggest houses uh, all the money that they have the power you know and it, it's sometimes it's even if you are that guy at the top and like you're talking to someone that's kind of like below you there there is no one below you and you're not at the top but we're all the same and if we want to make it to heaven we all need to be as equal right and to be equal to to make it to heaven we need to speak honestly we need to speak the truth, like Thomas Aquinas said. Uh, we need, so that's like to me. That's that's what humility is. It's honestly, it's it's truth. If you have anything else to add on to that, I mean, yeah, it's wait, Omar, you didn't yell at Pat for that one. You know what? <laughs> instead of yelling, instead of yelling, you know, I think this two minutes of humility talk really got to me. And Fadi, unfortunately, I took out everything I had on you. And with, when Pat came along, I forgave him. I said, you know, the heck with it. You know, if he wants to be a host, I'm going to lower myself, be humble. Let him be the host. You know, it feels good to be the host. That's awesome, Omar. That was uh, to add to that, I mean, just thinking about dropping the pride and ego, we aren't called to worship ourselves, right? We're called to worship God and his love and mercy for us. When we, when we brag or we have this pride about ourselves we, and we say, you know, I'm so great at this or I'm so good at sports, or I'm so smart in school. We're kind of putting God in the back seat rather than acknowledging that God is blessing us with these with these talents, with these gifts. So a good way to look at it is through Jesus himself, right? God's his only son to become a living God, right? But he was living as a human as well. That shows the ultimate form of humility. God didn't need to come down and guide all, all the people towards the right thing, but he chose to come down and be humble and humble themselves as a form of a human to guide people towards heaven. And if that wasn't enough, he also died on the cross for us, right? A living God, somebody that could have with the snap of a finger got off the cross when they were poking at him saying, you're not God, right? He humbled himself and he died for our sins. And we have the perfect example of Jesus Christ himself as our humble leader. Wow. Great point there, Fadi. Great points there, Pat, as well. So what we're going to do right now, uh, we're going to take a commercial break. I really don't want to. It's just flowing very, very well. You guys are doing an excellent job on the show tonight. Very well organized talk. Thank you for that, by the way. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Fadi and Pat. They're going to have more on humility.
What's up crew? This is Sean coming to you guys for a quick commercial break. Um, something I did during this quarantine with a couple of my friends, we started a group chat. It's called Totus Tuus. And that's the Latin phrase meaning totally yours. So what that means is, uh, it was the motto of Blessed St. John Paul II. And that's taken from the book, uh, True Devotion to Mary, written by St. Louis de Montfort. Um, and so it pretty much signifies that we should desire to give ourselves entirely to Jesus through Mary. Um, we pray the rosary daily. Um, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 9 p.m. And then Wednesday and Friday is at 10 p.m. It's on Zoom. Um, the code is 4410874173. So, and then the password is also rosary. So if anybody would like to join, feel free, invite your families. And welcome back to Thursday Night Live, presented by St. Thomas Crew Brotherhood. We got Fadi, we got Pat. They already went into a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff. They dug deep into humility. But now, they're going to get a little bit personal. So, Fadi, I'll ask you. Actually, Fadi, you went first. So, Pat, I'm going to ask yeah. you, how do you show humility? Let's just, like, throughout your day, you know, like, you know, what are some of your favorite ways to show humility? Or just how do you th show humility? Anything. Give me something, Pat. Give me something good because I know you're great. Uh, I mean, so sometimes it's kind of hard for me, you know. Uh, BK always talks about, like, you know, how he's the world's greatest driver, right? Or, or he's definitely uh, great. Scoop, but... <laughs> zoom. Scoop, 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 scoop. Ooh, yo. I don't know if I should say it on camera, but I, I'm not the world's greatest driver, you know. And I, I always say that I am, but, but I'm not. Uh, you ain't know Dale Earnhardt? No, not. <laughs> I didn't know how to say his name, Dale Earnhardt. Aaron yep. <laughs> no, but uh, it's sometimes just knowing that, like when, like when people need to talk to me, especially like at work or or if I'm talking to my parents or if I know something, and someone else is trying to explain that same thing to me, I'm not gonna try and interrupt them. You know, I'll, I'll let them finish what they're trying to say, because if I interrupt them, then it's like it's showing kind of like power. And it's like, I'm showing that I'm kind of better than you. But if, if I let you finish and I agree with your points and I, I'm understanding and I'm kind of flowing with the conversation instead of making it about me and how I know and how I think you're wrong, then I'm, I'm letting my humility help me, right? And I'm, I'm showing humility instead of letting my pride get in the way of that conversation I'm having with someone to help them out. So that that's kind of a way that I show humility, or at least I try to, and I'm trying to get better, you know? So, I mean. Pat, you did an excellent Pat. job. Excellent job. Very nice, Pat. Go ahead, Fadi. Go ahead. Um, one way I show humility or try to improve on is just, um, just giving all the glory and, and, you know, any accomplishments I may have to, to God, right? It's easy for us to kind of live in our own world and say, you know, wow, I got all A's this semester. It's, it, I'm so proud of myself. but to just sit back and realize God's blessing me with, with these gifts. God woke me up this morning to let me go to school. God gave me a, a brain to go to class and attend and learn what I'm learning in class, right? So giving glory to God throughout every day, um, especially during times of accomplishments, and then also relying on God when things go wrong. One thing I struggled with early on was when times got tough, I would kind of just have this pride about myself, like, I'll get through it. I'll get through it. But I'm not going to get through it alone. It's through God. God's going to get me through it. So when you learn to accept his hand, you know, he's, he's reaching for you. He wants you to be with him. If you go and reach, you will succeed, right? You'll, you'll get past those downfalls. You'll get past those hard times. And that's some ways that I've been improving on becoming more humble, just reaching out to God through good times and bad times. Very, very, very nice body and Pat. Just a little something I'll add on to, you know, to your talk, building off your talk, uh, something that hit me as you guys were talking, like, you know, everyone, you know, you want to work hard. You want to have, you know, that status. You want to be called doctor. You want to be, you want to have a good, you know, a good job. You want to drive it. You want to drive a nice car. You want to have a nice house. You work hard for it. You work hard for it. It wasn't given to you. You worked hard. You, you were grinding all day and night studying or doing whatever you had to do to get better at your job, you know, to earn what you did and support your family. And, but everyone is respected for a different reason. So, you know, if you're, you know, you get, you're, you're wealthy, you're smart, you know, you did great things, 
you know, you'll be respected, you know, for that. People respect you, look up to you. This guy worked hard. But doesn't mean you're respect going to be respected. You shouldn't be respected more or doesn't mean you shouldn't respect others because, you know, this guy, yeah, you know, he works at a fast, so he works at a drive through So what, I'm a, I'm a big shot lawyer or something. I'm going to pull up to the drive through He's going to get my order wrong when I'm going to cuss him out and say, hey, look at me, look at you. You know, I, I get more respect. You got to respect me no matter what. I'm going to punk you out. That's just the way life is right now. We need to show humility. And I don't know why I always thought that, like, like what would Jesus love more than seeing something like that? Like, yeah, I'm a big shot. And then this guy's not a big shot. And I'm saying, hey, it's okay. Yeah, you made a mistake. It's all right, man. It's all good. You know, like, that's just humility is just a beautiful thing. If you ask me, if I ever see a situation like that, I just say, man, that's a beautiful thing. Look at this guy. Look how he's treating this guy. And look how it's separate. They are. Look how different they are. This guy's poor. This guy's rich. But but look at him, you know, because at the end of the day, when we die and go to heaven, that rich guy and that poor guy, they're going to be the same. You know, if they make it up there, you know, hopefully they do. You know, I hope they do. I'll pray for them. But so we need to respect each other and not worry about, you know, our statuses and show humility, man. I don't know. Amen to that. Yeah. Omar, to your point, right? We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Where nobody is ahead of anybody in in God's eyes, right? We're all children of God, mm-hmm. and you know we're all called to love, right? So you, that was a beautiful point. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And Thank you. Even Jesus it. himself said, "Whatever you do for the least of my people, you do for me," right? So body, so you body, love everybody, regardless. Hit the nail. So, you know. Nice. That's what I was thinking about. I was like, Jesus says something, man. What did he say? And here comes Spotty. Here comes Spotty. Yeah, so it's always it's always a good thing to look at everybody equally. Like you said, regardless yeah. of how much money you make or how much power you have or how many employees you have or what kind of grades you get, what kind of athlete you are, all that doesn't matter. We're all children under God, and we have one ultimate goal, which is to get to heaven. And like St. Augustine said, we need humility, otherwise we're not making it. Right. That's right. That's right. Anything else that you two would like to add to close this out? That Fadi, anything you would like to say? The floor is yours. This is your show. I'm the host. But each week, whoever my guest is, it's his show. Just like you come to somebody's house. Hey, my house is your house. Well, man, don't ask me. Don't ask me. You want something? Go in the cabinet. Go get a snack. Go get whatever you want. You know, I don't be shy. Don't be yeah, shy. You're gonna bring me a coffee. Listen, we need to show. Tell you is that, Omar. We need to show humility. We need to show humility. We got to start taking it easy on Jeremy, myself included. You know, he, he made a nice pot of coffee today. I mean, pot of chai. So, I don't oh, know. Jeremy go ahead, gave you the baddest cut, man. Yeah, Jeremy been giving some nice haircuts during the quarantine. So, <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a haircut in like a month and a half. This is getting nasty. But what are you going to do? Forget about it. Forget man, about it. Honestly. So, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we'll look forward to having you guys again. Again, you guys are highly requested. But, you know, down that, uh, I don't know, people go crazy for this guy. I really, if you ask me personally, I don't know what they see in him, but they love him. They love him. I love him too, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on. He's just, he, he walks around, people start screaming, this guy. I don't know. But anyway, you know, uh, thank you guys for being on the show. And we're going to end with some hillbilly dilly now. You guys know how it goes. So apparently Hillbilly Dilly was spotted on Pat's farm. So there should be some excellent footage in Hillbilly Dilly today. Right, Pat? Uh, yeah, we might as well just cut. <laughs> Hillbilly Thank Dilly. Let's go Thank do it. Let's do it. No problem at all. No problem, guys. No problem. My, my show is your show. You got it, guys. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless you guys. What's up, St. Thomas crew? Right now we're going to check on Hillbilly Dill, see how he's been holding up, and I'm going to ask him about that turkey. Oh, Roscoe, that's my brother. No, he don't got corona. Don't talk like that. He's hey, not Hello, guy. Hello, Hillbilly. How are you? So me and Roscoe are having a little chat. Oh, nice. Uh, Say hi, Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe. Um, don't piss me off. You know I'll do to you last time. Well, that's it. <laughs> oh, boy. Billy, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, how was that turkey you had last week? Oh, that was that was that was good. That was good. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Hey, uh, you know, it, it is raining. You mind if I hop in the truck? You don't got coronavirus, do you? No. Have you been tested? 
No, I don't have any symptoms. Okay, get in. All right, here, Billy, your truck sure is comfortable. I see why you live in it, you know? Yeah, it sure is. I, li I like the new hat you got on, too. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I was going for the sporty look, you know? I got a new haircut. Oh, yeah? I don't know if I'm too fond of it, though. Why, why don't you show the viewers? No. Oh, come on. Just a little glance. No. Come, come, give me that. What oh. the heck? Oh, you can't boy. do that to me. That's you can't a, do that to me. That's one buzz cut. <laughs> oh, you like it? Yeah, it's pretty pretty darn fine, I tell oh, you. Oh, yeah, I did a pretty good job in the back. Yeah, you know, like, uh, I, th you know, I think you did pretty good. I don't, I don't know if you could tell, but I did it myself. Oh, no way. Wow, couldn't tell at all. Wow. Yeah. Dang. So how'd you do it? Um, well, three easy steps to looking as good as Hillbilly Dill is right now. Um, step one, grab a buzzer. Step two, put it on number three. And step number three, take it around town. You just, number three all the way around, huh? Yeah, number three is the way to go. Wow, that's, I don't see not that. Yeah, well, there's my turkey alarm. Oh man, you got another one this week? Oh yeah, I got a hunt to survive. That's very true, very true. You eat any vegetables? Mm, no. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was taking some chiara out of, uh, Father Rodney's, uh, garden behind the church. Oh boy. Yeah, I even left him a nice pardon gift before oh, okay. this Rona thing started out. Uh, you know that raccoon pelt that I was talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I filled it with cotton and I left it on his porch. I hope he likes it. We'll find out until his quarantine's over. But uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll love it. He'll love it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll, he'll love that. And I'm sure he's very glad you gave him it. But thanks, Hill Billy Dill. Oh, um, yeah. But that, that's not over. Uh, later today, yeah, I got plans. Later today, uh, I'm going to take uh, Father Brian some of that leftover turkey I got last week. He's going to love it. I'm going to leave it on his porch. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he'll love it. You know, he's he's into the whole, like, hunting. You know, he does that, like, war room thing. I'm sure I'm sure he's very into that kind of stuff. He goes to war? Yeah, he goes to war. It's called War Room. He films it, like, every other Wednesday. It's pretty oh, cool. Oh, he has to teach me a thing or two. I'll, I'll make sure to tune in. Oh, yeah, yeah. War Room's awesome. You'll, you'll learn a thing or two, Hillbilly. You like that whole warfare battle tactical kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I make sure to watch it every Wednesday. Oh, Hillbilly, as I was walking up to your car, I noticed you had a hitch on the on the bag. Did you get a trailer or something like that? Oh, 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 oh. you're going to love this story. I, I got a brand new boat from the junkyard. I took it out. I tried I try to use it, you know. I was fishing about it for about a, a good five minutes, and then I hear a <laughs> Water started flowing like Niagara Falls, okay? I, I was scared for my life, but then I remember one thing. Jesus told the disciple Peter that he could walk on water, so I tried, and I popped right in. So so what happened to you, Hillbilly? Well, well, I, I fell in the water with my life jacket, and, and, and I swam to shore. Oh, what happened to your boat, then? It's in the bottom of the lake. Oh, is there any way of getting it back? I don't know. You guys want to help me? I don't think that's a mission for us, but, uh, you know what? I think that boat was good while it lasted. What do you think? Five minutes weren't worth much. You know what, Hillbilly? That's not so bad. I mean, at least you got your truck, right? Yeah. Gotta be grateful for what you have, not for what you don't, you know? Maybe I'll get a better, better boat in the future, you know? One that s floats on water, doesn't sink to the bottom. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good characteristic of a boat. <laughs> yeah, that's one I look for now. Yeah, well, that's a good point you made. You always got to look on the bright side and, and have hope and trust in God, you know? 100%. All right, Hillbilly Deal. We'll catch you next week, all right? Hillbilly Deal signing out. Yee! Live action.